Hi guys, so a few months ago I decided to make my first Hackintosh, primarily for gaming and video editing. I wanted to upgrade from my 2012 Retina MacBook Pro, but there just wasn't a computer from Apple which suited my needs. The lower end Macs like the Mac Mini, MacBook Air and the 13 inch MacBook Pro were all stuck on integrated graphics and limited, unupgradable internal storage and RAM. And the higher end Macs were all prohibitively expensive. So that left me with a Hackintosh as the only realistic option. This being my first Hackintosh, I was obviously worried about stability and compatibility, but after building this machine and actually using it for several months, I found that if you choose your components carefully, you can make a perfectly stable, very fast Mac OS X capable machine for a fraction of the price you'd pay for an Apple computer of equivalent spec. So in this video I'm going to be showing you the components I use to make the machine and then in the second part I'll show you the machine in use along with some benchmarks. I wanted something small but powerful with lots of room for storage so this machine was built with these objectives in mind. Starting with the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte H97N Wi-Fi which is a mini ITX board with six SATA connectors, six USB 3 ports, and it's one of the recommended motherboards on Tony Mac X86. The Wi-Fi doesn't work on this board out of the box, but it's simple to swap out the mini PCI card for an Apple one if you need Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I chose the Intel Core i5-4460 at 3.2 GHz. This was the CPU that provided the best bang for the buck in my opinion. The performance increase from going to an i7 wasn't worth the additional cost. And for gaming or video editing, the GPU is going to be doing most of the grunt work anyway. For RAM, I used two 8GB sticks of Kingston HyperX Fury DDR3 for a total of 16GB. 16GB is more than enough for gaming or Final Cut Pro and it also happens to be the maximum this motherboard can handle. For the boot drive, it obviously had to be an SSD. I chose the Samsung 850 EVO as it's a proven performer and it's available at a decent price. This machine is going to dual boot Windows 10 and Mac OS X and I wanted a separate Windows drive so I chose a SanDisk Ultra 2. I could have gone with another 850 EVO but I sold this drive for a very good price and just picked it up. The Windows side is only going to be used pretty much for gaming anyway. Next, the storage drives, and I went with two Seagate Barracuda 2TB 7200RPM drives in RAID 0, which gives about 350 megabytes per second read and write speeds. For some reason which I still don't quite understand, external drives are a lot cheaper than internal ones, despite the fact that they use more components. So I ended up buying two Seagate expansion external drives and just harvested the drives from them. For the GPU, I chose the ASUS GTX 960 Strix. This seemed to be the best cost to performance ratio card available at the time. The 4GB version of the GTX 960 was announced a few weeks after I got this. And if I'd known at the time, I'd have waited for that. But this card works very well with NVIDIA's web drivers under OS X. For the case, I wanted something small and minimalist but with plenty of room for drives. So I chose the Bitphoenix Phenom Mini ITX case in white. You can fit a full size graphics card in there and the drive support is very flexible with 6 3.5 inch bays or 11 2.5 inch bays. For the power supply, I got a Corsair CX Modular 500 Watt. This is enough to power several drives on the graphics card with capacity to spare. For the monitor, I wanted an ultra-wide display, so I went with LG's 29UB65 that I'd already been using with my MacBook Pro. The height is easily adjustable, and the 2560x1080 resolution means that I can run games at the native monitor resolution with no scaling. I also have a Lissi Porsche 2TB external USB 3 drive for backups. Next, an original Apple wired keyboard. You can use a Windows keyboard, but it's really not ideal for a Hackintosh. With an Apple keyboard, all the function keys work just as they would on a real Mac, and you don't have to think about which keys are mapped where. Finally, for recording voiceovers and so on, I've got a Zoom H1 recorder, which can also be used as a USB mic, 
and it works perfectly with QuickTime or Final Cut Pro. So those are the components. The total cost excluding the display was about 750 euros or just under $800 or about a thousand euros including the cost of a monitor. If I'd gone for Apple hardware this wouldn't have even got me an entry level iMac with integrated graphics and 8GB of RAM. This machine runs OS X El Capitan really well. It's very stable once set up correctly. I don't think I've had a single kernel panic and it's faster than any Mac I've owned despite costing half as much. In the next video I'll talk about some of the issues with installation and also show a few benchmarks. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching.